On ne peut pas créer des emplois de la manière que les conservateurs sont en train de le proposer ici. Il y a aujourd'hui 240 000 jeunes Canadiens qui n'ont pas de travail. Plus de ce qui a de 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 FEDNOR be a ministerial level institution, in other words, so that they can do the important work in the North, and that's something we have fought for and they listened to us, so we're very happy about that. You cannot steer your way out of a crisis. This is what Mr. Flaherty is attempting to do. His predictions are consistently wrong. As we've seen again, he's running a higher deficit than he thought he would. His predictions on growth for the year that's just ended were wrong. He's predicting even higher growth next year. When we're here together next year, we will find out that that was also wrong. 240,000 young Canadians are looking for work more than the numbers that were existent at the time that the crisis hit in 2008. We find that unacceptable. There's a work fair program being proposed for First Nations, which is a slap in the face to First Nations. It's insulting, it's paternalistic, and they're the only ones who are getting this sort of proposal. It's a sop to his Reform Party base, and it plays to the worst prejudices against First Nations. Stephen Harper should be ashamed of himself at a time when First Nations have been holding out a hand for reconciliation. They're, he's giving them the back of his hand. We're also very concerned with the overall approach of this government, which we consider to be wrong-headed. We think it's simply wrong to continue putting all our eggs in the extraction basket, emptying out the balanced economy that we had built up since the Second World War. There are some positive things in here. We're glad that they have listened to our Northern Ontario team, which for a long time is asking, for example, that FedNOR be made a standalone agency. Overall, it should be borne in mind that Stephen Harper, and Jim Flaherty have consistently gotten it wrong with regard to their budget predictions. The deficit is higher than had been predicted. Growth was lower. They're making a very high prediction for next year to come up with their under $20 billion deficit prediction. That will, of course, also be proven to be wrong. Contrary to everything they've promised, they are downloading a lot onto the backs of provinces. That's a great concern for us as well because there's a shell game being played, especially with job creation. They talk about this new tax credit. It's a sponsorship game where they're going to put the, the maple leaf on something that they had sent over to the provinces and now they're taking back. It's just an example of further bad management on the part of the Conservatives. There is talk about uh, reopening the labor market agreements. Uh, well, I'd say that this is another example of mismanagement on the part of the Conservatives. They conceded that uh, to the provinces uh, in recent years, and now they want to take it back in order to be able to put uh, the maple leaf on the check. It's like the sponsorship uh, program, a conservative one, that is only intended to ensure that they can take uh, uh, credit for something they sh shouldn't take credit for. They uh, sent uh, the money to the provinces recently, now they're taking it back. So again, this is an example of their bad management. Should there be conditions attached uh, to this? La formation. Well, uh, training is a provincial responsibility, and the Supreme Court decided that the Employment Insurance Program is a federal responsibility. But for years we've been signing agreements because training and education uh, belong to the provinces. Now, uh, not so long ago, this uh, government conceded labor market training to the provinces. Why are they taking it back now? Well, because it's a PR uh, exercise, that's all it is. And this is proof that they're bad managers. They want to put a maple leaf on the chair and that's it. It's a very good idea to start encouraging the creation of new jobs for young people. The problem here is that it's a shell game. They're simply taking part of what had already been transferred to the provinces, they're taking it back and they're putting a maple leaf on the check. It's a sponsorship system. They want to take credit for something. That's fine if we create jobs. I don't know if it's going to do the job, but I do know that after years 
of inaction on this file, there are 240,000 more unemployed young people in Canada today than when the crisis hit in 2008. So this sort of effort that consists of sending money out to the provinces and then taking it back is not an example of good management, it's an example of bad public administration. It's a pure waste. These are the people who don't like red tape. This is red tape pulling back on red tape. It's not a good idea. No, you had quite a few demands with respect to infrastructure. Have your expectations been met? Well, I think uh, this will take more time to examine because the Conservatives will try to convince you that there's a big uh, um, shift uh, towards infrastructure. But the fact is that their numbers don't include inflation. So if you look, it's, it's written in constant dollars. It says cash in the budget. In other words, it doesn't consider in inflation. It's difficult to explain, but if you look at it carefully, you'll see that there's a drop of several billion dollars. There is a crisis uh, uh, of infrastructure in Canada at this time. The provinces through the municipalities have to do things that they aren't able to do anymore. Municipalities have been asking for this for a long time. They are responsible for 40% of Canada's infrastructure with only 8% of the tax base, so they can't manage it. Now the Conservatives are going to try to convince Canadians that this is a big number over 10 years. The fact is it's not adapted to inflation. It's not even uh, adapted to the rising costs of infrastructure. And you'll see that if you look at this. You'll see that it's actually a reduction compared to what was forecast. It's ridiculous to say that with the numbers on the table, they already will have a, a deficit of less than 20 billion next year. I mean, uh, just look at what happened in the past. In the past, the Conservatives make mistakes every single time they make forecasts. They make a mistake with their uh, spending and with their revenues and with the growth level. And it's going to be the same thing this year. This is an exercise uh, that we've seen before. We're used to it. It's a good thing if we start looking at the areas of the country that have been devastated by the choices of the Conservatives. Don't forget, we've lost over 600,000 good-paying manufacturing jobs in Canada since the Conservatives came to power. And that's hurt areas like southern Ontario the most. We're happy also to see that in northern Ontario, FedNor is going to become a standalone agency. That's something that our northern Ontario NDP team has been asking for for a long time, and we're happy the government has finally seen reason on that one. Yes, of course they understand how fragile the economy is and how vulnerable they are politically in southwestern Ontario in particular. I've toured the region several times. I was back there last weekend and I can tell you people are very concerned to see that areas that were once motors for growth in our country, like uh, Greater London, Ontario being one of the, sec uh, being the second highest unemployment uh, in, in all urban areas in Canada, it's just not something people are used to. The government hasn't been acting. Let's hope that it's more than an electoral stunt setting up for 2015, that there'll be something real there. We don't have a lot of confidence in this government. Government. If you were to implement all the measures that you would like, would you have the NDP government have us run a deficit and for how long would you be comfortable running a deficit for in order to implement the measures? Let me tell you what we would do differently. We would look at every time we had a problem to, to deal with, we would look at the long term effect on the on so on the social angle, the economic angle, and the environmental angle. The choices that the Conservatives have been making are leaving the largest ecological, economic and social debt in our history on the backs of future generations. We would take a different approach. They're putting all our eggs in the extraction basket. They're not taking into account the long-term effects contrary to what they're claiming today. That's a big difference between the two parties. We're going, to, we're, going to be, we're going to be responsible public administrators. The type of shell game, con job that you see in today's budget is not something you'll ever see from the NDP.